Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to game number five between UC Riverside and University of Washington. This game is between UGP Taiga, a.k.a. Andy Vo, playing for UC Riverside. And we can see Taiga spawning at the 9 o'clock as the yellow Protoss on Metropolis. On the other side of the map, spawning as the red Zerg for University of Washington, we have J. Sin Kim, a.k.a. Gom, the red Zerg. So currently the games are tied 3-2-1 in University of Washington's favor, which means University of Riverside will need to come back from, well, 3-1 deficit, which means they have three games that they have to win in a row. If they lose one more game, they are eliminated from the Western Division Finals, and that's that. University of Riverside will be out of the tournament. I'm not sure if there's actually a consolation bracket, um, but I'll have to take a look. So. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to these players. Gom, I don't know. UGP Taiga, he was actually in the very first game I ever casted ever about a week ago playing against Reverie, and he did do some very, very interesting play with some Dark Templar harass. He threw down some Void Rays, and he ended up eventually losing to a massive tech switch from his opponent Reverie. It was a very interesting game, and it was actually on this exact same map, and the... The two players were close by air spawn, so it does look like it is a little bit different. Both players are cross map, so we'll see if Taiga does want to change things up just a little bit. And we see a forge. It looks like we're probably going to see a forge going down just about now. Oh no, actually waiting to see if there was close by air and then deciding to go with the Nexus first. I kind of like that. And Gom just being safe, going with the pool first. His opponent did scout him, so... I'm not sure. There is a neutral supply depot, so you cannot cannon wall your opponent in, and the Zerg uh, will be able to get out. However, if you do go for that very, very fast hatch first, typically the Protoss will throw down a pylon in the mineral line and then some cannons behind it, which, trust me, is very, very annoying. So it does look like I'm just playing safe, getting that spawning pool first so he can clear up any pylon that might go down. I'm not sure if Taiga's going to do that. It looks like there is an excellent block from Taiga. And, oh, there's the pylon just denying that expansion even longer. So we did have the forge also just go down. Just going to make sure that that expansion is going to go up for a while. And look, Taiga even already on top of things, scouting just to make sure there isn't already a hidden third. So already on top of his game. We see four Zerglings in production. Standard, standard opening so far from both players. Gateway to complete the wall in. This is standard safe play. And now right in, about now we're going to see a cannon right in between. There's the cannon. So, yes, it does look like Gom did scout, did see that his opponent is in fact not in the close by air and is therefore cross map. So let's see how res he responds. The pylon, I believe it was cancelled. Um, resources lost. No, I don't... So, actually, yes, it was cancelled. Units lost, I believe that was the pylon. And here we have the probe scouting around the map and the Zergling chasing it. So, we'll see just how far this probe can get with the Zergling on its tail. Looks like the probe is just going to make sure there is no quick third yet. I don't know if Taiga is actually preparing to take that. The queen just popping out. And now we see... Oh, there is the drone, and the probe sees it, so Taiga knows that he's safe for a while at least. Not going to be any early roach aggression, and it does look like this probe might die to these zerglings. I do believe zerglings are faster than a probe, um, and actually we have the intercepting zergling looking like it's going to try to get a flank, maybe? Um, but that would be just a little bit overkill for one single probe, so there it is. Six hit points, and here comes one more... The probe just might get away one health so close, and the probe does go down. Boy, that was close. So Cybercore, relatively standard while in the probe on hold position, just preventing any uh, scary run-bys. We do have uh, Gom in the meantime is droning up. He's currently up to 24 to 26. So this is the same thing that I saw with Taiga versus Reverie. Two base chrono boost boosted probes is initially faster than three base uh, Zerg spawn larva. So we just take a look at the unit tab. And someone is lagging, says UGP Taiga. So in just a moment, we're probably going to see somebody leave this game. And, oh, it looks like we have a Stargate going down for Taiga. And the Overlord scout did not see it. The Overlord is running around. This is actually kind of frightening. And actually, we have a couple of people leaving now. Um, is that Fo Yu? I've heard that name before. Um, Faith out. Get out. Apparently, Faith is lagging. There he goes. His name is lag in it. So... Yeah, standard opening, we do see a Stargate going down. No scout yet from Taiga, but this will eventually be seen. The Stalker is going to get the Zerglings because Stalkers are faster than Zerglings by, I think, like, one. 
Let's see, move speed 2.95, Zergling move speed is 2.95, they're the same move speed, I didn't know that. So we do have a spine crawler going down for defense, and a void ray already out, uh, and I believe we already saw a game with UC Riverside uh, where they decided to get a very, very fast Stargate and then just use it for defensive purposes and just clean the map of Overlords just with the Void Ray instead of the actual Stargate. And instead of Phoenixes, and it looks like the Stalker will be repelled, is not able to get any kills on those Zerglings. And the Queen is just doing her queenly duty. And <laughs> the Stalker abusing the range 6 of compared to the range 5 of the Queen. Warp Gate is going down. We do see Lair has started. And let's see. Lair, a Roach Warren, and an Evo Chamber. So here comes the Void Ray. Let's see. It does not get seen by the Overlord. It does sneak on by. Now we do have a Phoenix in production, so it looks like we are going to see some aerial play from our Protoss. Uh, as far as upgrades, there are no fast upgrades yet. I'm not sure that I agree with this. You do have the Forge. You may as well just have something to dump Chrono Boost into. Look at this. 100, 100 energy on the Chrono Boost. I'd really, really like to see at least like plus one weapons or even plus one aerial weapons if you're going for that very, very uh, air-centric army. And it does look like Gom will finally see these Void, this void Ray going out and immediately drops a Spore Crawler. Let's see where he dropped that one. That's going to be in the middle of the line of the Natural, which is the most saturated. Another one in the middle of the line of the Main. And lastly, a third in the middle of the line of the Third. So we do have a Phoenix and Void Ray. Just going to see if they're going to put on a little bit of pressure. This Queen should probably fall back to the Spore Crawler. It is a little bit far out on its own. That could be f picked up by the Phoenix and obliterated by the Void Ray. We do know that one Void Ray does beat one Queen. So... We are going to have to be careful here. More Phoenix is now in production, so just going to some good old-fashioned aerial harass. And there it is, the plus one that I was talking about earlier. Now a couple of roaches getting picked off, letting the Void Ray charge up, go to maximum warp damage. Let's see, that's six, I believe, and is that going to drop back down? Does it, does it have a changing unit tooltip? I don't think it does. So a Hydralisk going down. This is actually very, very defensive play from Gom, and it looks like that's exactly what Taigo wanted as we see the Robo Bay going down. For those of you who do not know, Colossi melt Hydralisks as if they were Zerglings. It's really, really painful to watch and even more painful to experience. So those Hydralisks are going to have to be careful. We might see some very, very creative play, hopefully, with these Hydralisks. Even getting Hydralisk range, so it looks like we are going to be committing to that ranged army with plus one at ranged attack going down along with movement speed for the roaches. I would like to see Gom get a little bit more creep sped because without creep, Hydralisks are exceptionally slow compared to most other units, so if you do find yourself forced in a position where you do need to fall back, you try to make an attack and it does not go as well, most of your Hydralisks will actually die because your opponent can simply pursue and kill them while they're running away. So, healthy number of uh, uh, Phoenixes are out on the field now. Does look like Taiga is now preparing to take his third, which Gom sees. He sees the army has broken down the rocks, and Immortal is out. We're going to see plus range on the Colossi going down. So standard play so far. Um, here are a couple of Hydralisks. These Hydralisks do need to be careful already with that number of Phoenixes because they can just pick them up. There we go. There's one, two, and three. No, the third one actually did get away. So you really need to get to a healthy number of Hydralisks before you can really engage that aerial army because you can just get picked off. This extra gas doesn't need to be taken because Hydralisks are so heavy on the gas. We have a macro hatch going down. So, so far, safe conservative play and Caliber Light now leaves the game. So, very, very defensive. Three cannons for this one Nexus. I believe that's what uh, Taiga did in the previous game against Reverie. And these Hydralisks, if they keep getting picked off like this, it's just going to take up so much gas, so many minerals. We can already see 125 supply to 116. So, this Phoenix Void Ray Harass has already been very, very effective. We look at the units lost tab. Oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. We have 20 units have been killed by Taiga. So, I'm not sure if those have been drones, Zerglings, Roaches, or Queens. However, really. Uh, don't agree with that many units. The Hydralisks do need to be careful. I'm not sure if he's just trying to bait these units back. And the Void Ray is going to go down. Looks like a little bit of Miss Micro from Taiga, not really paying attention. Uh, Gom, in the meanwhile, is trying to secure his fourth. 
and the Phoenixes are going to have to fall back, and it looks like we're seeing a push go out from Gom. I'm not sure that I agree with this. We do have one Colossi out with plus one attack. Some cannons now going down to help defend the main. A Spire actually in production for Gom, so it looks like we are going to be seeing a tech switch, but just judging by the rate of unit production, many, many roaches and upgrades, looks like we're going to see some aggression hit at the third, which is very, very well defended. Look at this. A gateway buffer for the cannons and then a Colossi stalker army to try to help support that so really not going to be that terrifying and it does look like these phoenixes are caught out of position by the hydralisks just a little bit i would really like looking forward to the mac uh, micro for these players so we'll go ahead and drop the wall here and take a look in the forge gets sniped i'm not sure if it was researching anything but another one is immediately started in the background and we do have Gom now positioning, looking like he does want to put on a little bit of aggression. Just judging by the units flowing across the map, it looks like he's going to try to engage now, moving into the third, and then just falls back, decides he doesn't want to push in with those Colossi there. The Spire is going down, so we are going to see some Corruptors very soon, but just looking at the supply count, I'm not sure that I agree with this attack. And the Roaches walking in through the opening left by the Forge, seeing if they can do any damage, in the main, just sniping pylons. I don't agree with going for the pylons. Sure, it can limit your, limit your opponent's army. Actually, supply block going down now. 165 out of 158 for UGP Taiga. And it does look like Gom is now pushing in with the second Roach Hydralisk Force, trying to get into the third. He needs to control that better, see if he can do more damage, and see if he can perhaps snipe the Nexus. The Roaches are now going down, trying to see if they can do a little bit more damage. They have been relatively cleaned up, and another contingent of Roaches gets picked off by the Colossi army. And the Hydralisks, this is exactly what I was talking about. They're so slow. Excellent force fields. Locks in Gom's army and the uh, Colossi just demolish it so, so easily. We take a look at the supply, 170 to 145 for Gom. Not really an advantage at all, so this army didn't take a lot of damage. Uh, Gom really threw a lot of units away, and even now he's got some roaches set to miss rally. They are just going to be obliterated by this force, especially with the upgrades. We are at 1 to 0 uh, with 2 and plus 1 defense now going in production. Meanwhile, Plus two and zero carapace has completed for these ranged units. We do have a couple of corruptors now in uh, production to try to help clear the Colossi a little bit because Hydralisks have amazing DPS. They are just so incredibly squishy that they need to be supported. Hydralisks against anything except Colossi or Phoenix is exceptional. So we really... Uh-oh, and it does look like this Corruptor is going to get sniped, and it does look like Gom does want to engage. Excellent force field splitting off the army very, very effectively. These Roaches are engaging without the support of the Corruptors because the Corruptors are distracted by the Phoenix, and excellent composition from UGP Taiga. Looks like it is doing tons of damage. Um, I'm trying to follow exactly what's going on, unless all of those Roaches were killed already. That was a lot of damage. No, it does look like they did just back away after taking a healthy number of damage, and Gom is trying to resupply, but it is 135 supply to 180, and it looks like Taiga is just going to try to walk in and finish the game. We have these Co Colossi now are getting picked off by the Corruptors, but the Corruptors are afraid to engage with that giant Stalker reinforcement down at the bottom. Gom just trying to get as much supply as he can, and here come the Phoenixes now to try to distract the Corruptors, but the Corruptors are going to demolish these Phoenixes because they do so much damage, and there's a blink to pick off some Corruptors. One goes down, the Queen does go down at the third, the Roaches are not in a good position to engage. They are being funneled into the Protoss army because of the building placement of those hatcheries, and it does look like this third is going to go down if Kaiga continues to put on the pressure, and the Corruptors are now engaging the Colossi, one of them getting dangerously low, but it doesn't look like it will be enough as the remaining Corruptor gets picked off, and the Roaches are flanking from behind, seeing if they can catch the Colossi out of position. One will go down, the second also does go down, but these Stalkers are going to be able to clean it up. Reinforcements from Taiga are now rushing in to pincer off those back roaches, and it does look like these roaches are taking tons of damage. Plus two weapons is just about to finish, which will give uh, Taiga's army that much more staying power in these engagements. So, very, very, very close fighting. The Stalkers are doing tons of damage, now attacking the drones, running in uh, 95 supply to 190 of Taiga, and there it is, GG Gom taps out of game number two. So, game, or excuse me, game number five. So, currently, as far as scores, it is three to two in University of Washington's favor. Andy Vo, aka UGP Taiga, takes game number five for University of California at Riverside. So, very, very exciting series so far. If we could see two more games from University of Riverside, they would win. Uh -huh. So definitely looking forward to these next games, and I'll see you guys in game number six.